everybody, it's Vicky, the director of the Mind Body Food Institute. Now, I want to help you overcome some limiting beliefs when it comes to your potential and your ability to actually coach someone. Often, we talk ourselves out of doing something before we even start. So, listening to your self talk just long enough to pull it out into your conscious awareness and really catch challenge and change that negative limiting belief. Asking yourself, does this belief actually serve me? If it's trying to talk you out of actually putting yourself into the position of sitting with someone and conducting a practical coaching session, then that belief is not serving you. It's holding you hostage and keeping you from moving forward and actually doing something that you really want to do. The fact is we all have to start somewhere. And you arranging your practical coaching sessions is a necessity to be able to complete this course. Most people freak out before they get started. It often stops them or delays them from getting started for some time. But when they actually do sit down and they conduct that first practical coaching session and they use the guiding questions that have all been compiled for you in the first four modules in stage one, they're all there in front of you. If you use those coaching questions as a guideline just to practice asking powerful questions and listening, using your new and flourishing skills, communication skills, to listen, pay attention, get curious, and allow that person sitting opposite you to feel heard, feel validated, and feel understood by using your feedback, paraphrasing, really allowing yourself to be present with that person. If you can do that, you can practice that, you are coaching. You are coaching. So these kinds of conversations we have with people all the time, when we might find ourselves getting so swept up in the story of our client that it's so interesting and it's fascinating why they've been doing what they've been doing, why they've been stopping themselves from actually receiving and allowing something good into their life that they really truly want to have or attain. And that's probably why you've been drawn to become a holistic life coach because you enjoy those deeper and meaningful conversations. So if you have some of those limiting beliefs creeping up in the back of your mind and saying to you, that's too confronting. I want to do that. That's going to be so uncomfortable. I won't know what to say. I, I, I'll make a fool of myself. I'll be so embarrassed. What if they have a problem that I don't know what to deal with? All of those thoughts that are going to be coming up in the back of your mind are completely normal and natural. When you're in the moment and you're listening to your coaching client, you are naturally curious. You are naturally wanting to help that person to see things differently, to take one positive step. Doing your practical coaching is going to confront you. It's going to challenge you. It's going to be scary. However, it's only going to be scary for as long as you entertain it. For as long as your mind unconsciously entertains those limiting beliefs that have held you back from really stepping outside of your comfort zone and doing something that scares you but that ultimately you are choosing. Here's something I want you to remember. Whether we are conscious or unconscious, everything that we have accumulated and drawn into our lives that currently make up our life have been choices. You have chosen the situation that you are in. You have chosen the life that you are living. And if you're unhappy with it, if you want to change it, if you want to make it something better or different, then understanding and taking responsibility for choosing these things out of a reason of what can you learn from them is going to be a great step for you in understanding that from this point on, you have choice. You can continue to make unconscious choices that are driven for you from your unconscious mind and your subconscious programming, or you can start to become a conscious creator. You can be more aware of when the thoughts in your mind are not in your best interest because they're coming from your fear response. They're coming from a programmed belief that has turned into a repetitive pattern that has become your default habit. Most of our choices in life are generally unconscious. That's no fault of anyone. It's just that our brain's processing power is somewhat limited in how much information it can process in any one minute. So when we've got a lot of information coming at us, there's only so much that we can take from that information to be able to form a meaning around it. That doesn't mean that every meaning we form around the experiences that we have in life is true for us. But 
if we examine these beliefs, if we examine the self-talk that we have around something that we really want to do but we feel fearful or agitated, frustrated or overwhelmed by, that we feel blocked by, that we are held captive from and just can't break through that ceiling. If we examine these thoughts, if we confront them, we have an opportunity to understand why they are there, what they're trying to teach us, what from our past experiences has us believing that we cannot overcome, that we cannot move forward, that we are stuck where we are. Because in reality, you are never stuck just where you are. You are never prevented from being able to reach your full potential. It's the mind that does that. It's the mind that creates your nervousness, your anxiety, your fear-based thinking. Your mind is the key. You can either live your life unconsciously or you can take charge and you can consciously create your next move. But it starts with your thinking. So if you're struggling with your practical coaching, if you are psyching yourself out and worrying about how am I going to sit down and actually coach someone, you need to start by focusing on what are you saying to yourself and pulling it out into conscious awareness and really challenging the hell out of it. If you don't challenge that self-talk, which is largely not true and based on old programming, whilst you have been moving through the course, getting to know yourself in a deeper level, doing the work, showing up, and you are ready to move beyond where you have currently been living your life. You are ready to create a new reality for yourself. That's why you signed up. That's why you joined us. That's why you're doing this course. The other particular reasons why you enrolled in this course, I want you to bring them into your mind now. What do you want to do? What is your intention? Who do you want to help? If you envision yourself helping people, coaching people, working with them, working online, working in groups and retreats, writing books and, and speaking, doing speaking engagements. If you envision all, for, all of that for yourself, just like other people who are successful who have done it before you, myself included, we all had to start somewhere. I had the similar fears that you do now when I first started. But if I didn't overcome those fears, if I didn't actually remind my lizard brain, my reptilian brain, my center of fight or flight, stress response, if I didn't actually catch those limiting beliefs, if I didn't actually stop that fear in its tracks and remind myself, I chose this, I chose to do this study, I chose to move into a helping profession, I am choosing to coach people, I'm choosing to counsel people, work with them. I'm choosing to put myself into this uncomfortable situation that is unfamiliar, that scares me because I know that in time consistently as I show up consciously every time and I sit with someone and I'm focused on them and I'm listening to them and I am using my own instinctive natural uh, curiosity and ability to listen and trust my own abilities to ask the right questions in that moment. If I didn't do that, I would never have got started. I would never have overcome the fear of coaching someone, of being with them. We don't always know what the right questions are to ask. In the moment, we do the best we can. So if you're not in the moment with your client, when you are doing a practical coaching or when you are fully qualified and you're a couple of years in, if you are not present and focused fully on your client, then you will start to get up in your head and allow the fear to overwhelm you or interrupt your pattern of thinking or interrupt your observational skills or your listening skills. So it's very important to practice being conscious, being in the moment, not allowing your unconscious programming to come in and sabotage your efforts to be the best coach you can be. But you can't be the best coach you can be if you don't coach. You need to show up, you need to coach. And I want you to remember that coaching is merely a conversation that is intentional. It's a conversation that is intention between you to help your client and your client to help themselves. Remember, it's not our job to fix them. They are not broken. It is our job to help facilitate the education and the awareness so that they can move forward taking responsibility for their lives and choices. We're simply helping them to become aware of why it's important that if they want change in their lives, they have to take action. 
And that's exactly what you need to do. If you want change in your life, if you want to become the coach that you envision, you need to step up and take action. That means that you're going to have to confront that fear that might be swirling around in the back of your unconscious that is creating your resistance to actually moving forward. Catch it, challenge it, change it, move forward. Act on that intention, that impulse in that moment of doing what it is that you know you want to do, that you know is a choice to get you to the next step. If you act, you move forward. If you don't, you stay still. This is a coaching conversation for you to consider and think about and hopefully take action from. Take care everyone.